it's a sad situation, it's an urgent situation that needs to be tackled. But we are too late in tackling that because an entire year has passed. Governments have not done anything about it. But I'm going to take you through pictures, the situation that is being faced by Delhi year after year, days after days. Now, if you take a look at my touch screen over here and a reflection of how things have deteriorated over the last one week, not just, just, just about one week, in the last five days. So this is the picture of uh, November 3rd, which is today. This is where North India has been covered entirely in haze. And if you take a look at uh, this area from right hand side, where is Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, it becomes worse as you move leftwards. There's Haryana, there's Delhi, there's Punjab. There is Multan, which is also being, Lahore is where information was pouring in yesterday, news reports that even Lahore has been facing, bearing the brunt of the farm fires in their city. And therefore, obviously, you know, if you take a look at the entire northern part of the country is engulfed in haze. If I take you through this picture of November 2nd, the situation is almost the same perhaps a little, little, little bit better than it was today. And here again, you can see this entire white matter that encapsulates these northern parts of the country. This is November 1st. And if I compare it to November 2nd and November 3rd, the haze, the smog is a little much lesser. And it is concentrated in Punjab and Haryana and northwards. Now, if I bring you to you the picture of what happened on October 30th as well, you see the relativity of the haze is, uh, is reduced over here, is lesser as compared to the, to the successive four days ahead. Uh, this is uh, October 28th, so situation uh, at this point of time was ideal. There were no smoke fires, there were no stubble burning fires and uh, in fact, uh, the entire northern India was, uh, was enjoying the beautiful weather, just the onset of winters. Now, here's uh, a look at the five years of farm fires and a comparative study of uh, the situation on the same day, November 3rd, every year on 2023, 2022, 2021, and so on and so forth. And here you look at this heat map where all the red marks indicate the farm fires. And if I zoom it, there you have it, the, the biggest of the, the largest, the most intense of these areas, in fact, is Punjab, with the maximum number of farm fires that are being burned. There are others as well on the right hand side, far and few in number. If you take a look at the comparative figures of what Punjab looks like versus what other parts of the country look like. Okay, here it is, November 3rd, 2023, almost, almost exactly the same image. So here you have 2023, this is it, what is 2022, this is what is 2021, this is what is 2020, and this is what is 2019. So quite, quite the drastic change. If you take a look at 2019, here's 2019, it has, it's, 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 if, if you compare it, now this is, this is a, this is a considerable, considerable amount, considerable amount of farm fires that are being witnessed over here in the northern part of our country, in Punjab, Haryana, uh, Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh region. Uh, but when you take quickly take a look at the successive years, these are massive. This is this is gone out of hand. That's what it is. Okay, then quickly taking a look at these images that my colleagues have been able to share with us of uh, various parts of North Delhi. Let's start off from Delhi. The various parts of North India, let's start off from Delhi. This is the smoke show. That is the, that is the handiwork of uh, the apathy of our politicians. And this is India Gate. And just a few meters away, this is, this is a picture taken of the India gate and you can't even see this facade, you can't even see this gate, uh, it's, it's that bad. This is Kartavya Path, again uh, the entire area is enveloped with haze, 
you can't even see just a few meters away. You would think this is this is as cold an area with where you will have temperatures of, of negative minus 1, minus 2, minus 10 and that is why the, the haziness and the fog that you witness, but that is not true. In fact, there were uh, uh, some uh, some friends uh, who were living out of uh, out of India, and they were uh, they thought that this was fog. So they qu continued to inquire is Delhi as cold? And uh, unfortunately, uh, it's highly embarrassing a situation for a Delhi. I had to tell them, you know, this is this is actually we, we are living under the cloud of smog and haze. This is Akshardham. This is the Delhi airport. This is Gurgaon. This is Delhi Gurgaon highway. This is Faridabad and Ghaziabad and Noida. This is a picture of Lahore, where also the situation is terrible because of this, because of the f fires, because of the farm fires. So now that we have taken a look uh, of, at the heat maps of the farm fires that increased substantially from 2019 up until 2020, 21, and up until now 2023. Let us quickly get in my panelists on the discussion with me. I have with me Dr. Tina Kapoor. Uh, Dr. Tina, again the big question, what went, wrong, what went wrong from 2019 to 2020 that these smoke fires increased tremendously? Absolutely. I mean, yesterday we were wondering that, you know, there is a, there is a, change in the weather and when I went out my uh, eyes were burning and uh, I had a uh, choke uh, throat and um, you know I, I realized that you know I need a lot of water and this thing happening to me which never happened uh, in the past as well but then um, you know uh, in the past in the sense I mean last year also we had similar kind of situation and people are choking but we had no idea you know this time it will be um, it will be double the crisis or probably the, um, you know, the cumulative crisis in the, uh, Delhi will uh, face because uh, government, uh, Delhi government should uh, have taken the measures. I, I, I still remember that, you know, one of my colleague uh, of BJP has, uh, you know, checked or did the random check of their smoke towers near Bangla Sahib, which was, uh, which wasn't working uh, probably six months back. I mean, he, he did some video on that or a, uh, the random check on that. So I think uh, if you're doing just for the sake of doing something or, uh, you know, uh, uh, that uh, the people they had appointed or the uh, traffic uh, uh, volunteers, you call it, but they were paying money to them. So they uh, were standing and, you know, the switch off, switch on. And these were the activities they were doing. But we realized that, you know, it was not making much difference. Government has revenue. Delhi government was abide uh, to give us the uh, clean, uh, you know, air this this year at least, because I know uh, they are they are going in elections and it's election tantrum for them to uh, make a lot of promises and you know fulfill some of them with uh, half heartedly. But then today, uh, what has uh, come from the court is commendable, and I really feel that you know our kids. My I have a small kid, and I think this Delhi is full of small kids who are you know, eager to go to school and they don't want to miss their school because of their friends or probably their studies or whatever. But then uh, they're sitting at home. They're yeah. attending um, virtual classes. So I, I yeah. think that, In you know, fact, now a, there is an a, announcement a, that has been made by the Haryana government as well. The Haryana government environment yeah, minister absolutely. was, today, was, was with us today. today he said Haryana they are going to be implementing. Open. They yeah. said we'll be implementing uh, this closure of schools in Haryana as well, where students will be asked to study virtually, Absolutely. Uh, sitting at home. So, so then Dr. Tina uh, Sharma, like the situation, like you said, every single Delhiite is facing this. Many of our friends, family members, relatives, they have already, those who could, they have already stepped out of Delhi. They have, they have booked their tickets and they have flown out of Delhi because this is a perennial problem every year. So, they have marked their calendars that listen. From the start of October up until after Diwali time, we are not going to be staying in Delhi. And this is a very healthy, but smart way to do absolutely. this. But then you can't, I mean, I mean the fact that this has become like you just gotten used to it. The fact that, you know, every single time it no, happens, but, uh, there is, honestly, now you are not appalled. Yeah. Now you are like, okay, let's do what do we do? 
people people come from that strata can probably afford that Correct. or doing that but i i mean i and you can't afford we are working for a, i mean we work for some of the other people and we are not allowed to take chuttis like this we can't even plan our vacations as per our own you know convenience we have to take permission from the offices and we have to take see the see the work you know which is uh, work uh, um, you know shouldn't suffer but i must uh, Uh, put you through something which is uh, given by Atishi Marlina, 2020, and this is this is much more political. I would like to take it political today because I think uh, you know if you don't uh, make them accountable, they will never. And they're busy doing elections. Everybody is out of Delhi, busy doing elections. Our uh, chief minister is okay. doing Dharna, sitting at uh, Jantar Mantar or uh, sorry Rajkhat, which is which is which doesn't make sense to us. I mean, we are finding us. you know as a foolish taxpayers of delhi and honestly speaking i mean 2020 she says uh, atishi marlina the minister of delhi government says that data clearly shows that delhi pollution is directly correlated with stubble burning uh, in haryana and punjab and this time she says and this is ani reports i'm you know i'm quoting here and this time she says which is recent 25th october and the last i quoted is 18th november 2020 now she says there's no official data available which can tell which source leads to what amount of pollution i i think uh, the, the kind of statements they change the kind of promises okay. they make it's okay. uh, you know okay. it's uh, it's, you know, it's would, terrible it's uh, you definitely. know what i was uh, today to the whole day dr now. tina kapoor uh, i was uh, i was staying out of politics i was not getting political faces what i was instead wanting to do was to build pressure of on governments Absolutely. across I mean, north I, india I, 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 i i got i, mean, I, I got on my show some prominent some prominent eminent personalities I, I, people from 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 delhi to seen. to then talk about what the issue is what is the problems that they have been facing how their family members have been suffering how they have been forced to live in delhi in such a situation and whether at this point of time should delhiites be compensated with with funds because of the problem that they continue to face all right dr dr anil goel also on the telecast with me he is from the indian medical association secretary uh, dr goel uh, as dr tina kapoor was saying that you know she stepped out of her house and her eyes started burning her throat was choked and this is a problem that everybody is facing in delhi there is not a single person who's not faced this problem Uh, the hospitals and clinics at this point of time are inundated with uh, with such patients uh, people at this point of time as you can see on my screens you know they are wearing face masks or they have covered their face with dupattas and uh, scarves but does it re- does it really solve the problem so uh, thank you for having me on the show Delhi has become a gas chamber, and every uh, year this is recurring. This is not a problem this year. This is recurring for last say at least more than ten years. And we all know that why it has become gas chamber. What the, does the gas contain? The sulfur oxide, nitrous oxide, carbon monoxide, lead, and particulate matter, and all that. As a doctor, I am saying that thirty percent of OPD and IPD admissions are because of the respiratory diseases now at this moment of time. As a hospital owner, I am talking of. As a doctor, as a man. a member of indian medical association i am telling you this uh, statistics and uh, these problems are more especially in vulnerable children in pregnant women and of course in the adults who have already respiratory disease diabetes hypertension and so and so forth the going outside means uh, smoking 40 50 cigarettes per day that means any pregnant woman who is smoking 40 50 cigarettes passively due to this air pollution will have the growth retardation will have the premature birth and then the loss of complications during delivery and pre uh, delivery as far as children are concerned obviously their lungs are pre- mature premature immature so they will have more problems of dyspnea distress respiratory distress for adults i am saying everyone is coughing that is one everyone most of them are having headaches some of them are having uh, running nose and some of them who have low immunity along with the uh, diabetic hypertensive situations they have pneumonia they are needing uh, the bipap or oxygen support in icus they are at times needing uh, the ventilatory support especially 
if they already have chronic obstructive airway disease. And uh, again, there is one more important thing, the particulate matter. These are the uh, small dust particles or the particles which are less than 2.5 microns. They can cross blood barrier through the alveoli, through the lungs, from the lungs, they can go to heart, they can go to brain. So if they go to heart, they can cause um, heart attacks or the multiple problems in the forms of embolization. When they go to brain, they can cause depression, headaches, and uh, if uh, they have other side, yeah. suppose they have arterial issues, they will have another problem. So the solution lies with us. You said, we, I am seeing people with masks, I'm seeing people with hearing the patas. What I would propose in on your show is, please use N95 mask nowadays. Do not use the dupatta, it will not help you. Do use air purifiers in your, in, uh, say, uh, wherever you are working or even in indoors, you know, I'm highlighting even in indoors. Third part I would like to say, please, to ensure that your uh, family, your society, your RWA uh, helps you or, uh, in preventing this by doing the, uh, the water sprinkling. To try to do it outdoors, just outside your house, just outside your institution, just outside your workplace. Reduce dust. That is very, very, you can't control wind, so you, but certainly you can control dust. You can certainly control emissions. Do carpooling. So the, do go with the, on metros. The frequency of metros increase. Now, coming on to the government size. Why every year it is happening? Why can't we think? beforehand, the pollution control boards are there. Why they can't think beforehand that they need more frequent uh, sprinkling of water, more frequent dust control, better uh, vehicular emission control, better industrial pollution control, better um, this wood burning, especially now we see in- Yeah, in but, okay, in the, in fair enough. Societies. Yeah, you speak about yeah. this and also the fact that these three weeks are detrimental so badly to the health of the Delhiites and people living in North India, uh, what are the what are the long term repercussions of it? Yeah, so this is a very important question and pertinent question. The long term uh, effects are those who have already uh, compromised lungs. They will have a chronic lung disease. That is number one. They can have the reduced cardiac uh, function. That means they can have uh, the uh, cardiac function may decrease. But more so, especially because we are inhaling carbon monoxide and lead. Even the cancer is a definite possibility in these circumstances. So the chronic lung disease, chronic liver disease, chronic heart disease, and even to the extent of cancer, because it, that can lead to lead poisoning. And lead poisoning can also lead to your bowel problems. And the chronic mm -hmm. depression, that's also part. And then in children, you know, of course, as I told you, premature lung the pregnant women can have uh, the difficult delivery and the growth retardation of the fetus and of course adults as i have told you okay uh tina i'll again come back to you and uh, and uh, speaking from uh, the fact that you've you've lived in delhi you are a delhiite uh, and the comparison that you can draw from six years ago uh, versus now you have children uh, they at this point of time are, are facing such, uh, you know, the breathing poisonous air. Uh, are you also as a mother, as a parent concerned about their health, their, uh, their well-being? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, I, uh, you know, Megha, I would like to draw your attention that, you know, I live in Lutian Stelly. Uh, and my area is, uh, you know, is in the close proximity of Prime Minister's house. And I feel that, you know, as a privileged uh, you know, uh, uh, citizen of Delhi, I also feel threatened. I also feel that, you know, my house has, uh, you know, my house has uh, all, um, all uh, sites, you know, it has uh, uh, trees and everything and NDMC is looking after it. Still, we are facing the same thing. So it is no less for us and for the poor people. I, I completely agree with uh, Dr. Agrawal that, you know, uh, We've not seen this kind of pollution in, I mean, I've been staying in Delhi for about 25 years now. I've been married in Delhi. I was grown up in Delhi. And I feel that, you know, this kind of situation we've never seen. It's nice to hear that, you know, the the channel News X is not making it political because there's nothing to be, uh, you know, to go political on this. It's, it's a very, very, very fundamental right what we are trying to draw here. And the courts 
I have been taking cognizance because we know that our kids are sitting at home; they can't play outside. Yeah. Where Delhi is has you know all concrete. Yeah, Delhi but but then you no say great you say you, yeah you say you say the courts have taken cognizance of the matter, but unfortunately, why is it that the citizens have to then knock at the doors of the judiciary? It's because the incapability of our governments of doing anything about it. So, in, incapability of the governments and irresponsibility, and you know. Uh, we can't hold them accountable i am again telling you we are paying taxes on time if we don't pay taxes i'll be behind bars so tell me what option i have what option i can exercise somebody has to go in pagl the doctor is suggesting that you know the premature um, babies or whatever i mean these can be and i, I am telling you there are there are there are post covid symptoms we are facing in our body and yeah. we are going through that I got my checkup done, and doctor says you're absolutely fine. But I'm finding something, something you know, going worse in my body. I don't yeah. know what, but yeah. there's something. Absolutely. So it's, it's no, you can't even everybody. breathe. You can't even take a deep breath. Yeah, the air is so heavy. And you we can can't actually, even. Yeah. We can't even fly out. Yeah. We don't have that privilege. We don't have the. We can't even yeah. Fly we don't out. have the. You can't. You can't afford to do it. You have your responsibilities at work and at home. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.